Welcome to another episode of Salt Air. I'm Tom Hatch, the creator of Salt and the CTO of Salt Stack. With me today, I have CR Oldham. CR is the original engineer and inventor of the Salt Proxy System. And we wanted to bring him in here today so that he could talk through how Salt Proxy works and have a little demonstration of the Salt Proxy in action. What can you tell us about the proxy system in Salt here? So it, you may remember back, I think it was about 2014, you came to me and said, I want Salt to be able to control switches and routers. Mm -hmm. And and even back then, it, it was still kind of uncommon to have a full Linux distribution or some other, uh, something like FreeBSD running on a router or a switch. Most of those things were completely proprietary and inaccessible. So I uh, got to thinking about that. How could we make that happen? I originally just wrote an execution module, which worked fine, but didn't really enable everything that we wanted to be able to do with salt. For example, we wanted to be able to do targeting, uh, we wanted grains and pillar, uh, we wanted to be able to do things like upload firmware and have that firmware reside in you know, one of salt's file systems. Uh, and we couldn't really do that with an execution module, at least not, not easily. Right. So uh, I dug into the, the depths of the core of salt and um, kind of rearranged some things and figured out that we actually could uh, control the device from salt and make the salt master think it was just another minion. Uh, and we didn't treat that minion any different than a minion that might be running on a server uh, or somebody's desktop somewhere. So that was kind of the, the written, how the proxy minion came to be. Uh, and since then, it's experienced an incredible amount of growth. We've got many companies using it to drive very large network infrastructures, uh, even though since then many vendors have decided, oh, well, maybe we should just be able to uh, put a regular salt minion on, on our switch. Uh, but this, this works really well. Some, and they're all security issues too, right? You know, Some people don't want third-party code running on their device. They, they want to be able to communicate with it over a REST API or over SSH. Uh, so. Well, uh, yeah, and even a lot of the newer, the newer switches and newer network devices, uh, there's still motivation to interface with them this way. Right. Uh, but a lot of the older devices, they're certainly still out there. Yeah. We don't just magically reinstall the entire global yeah. networking infrastructure every That's couple true. of years. That's true. Despite what some vendors may want. <laughs> so since then, the proxy minion really just kind of exploded. And we realize that it doesn't have to be um, a very smart device on the other end. It can even be like a service, like like the Google, you know, Google G Suite API, for example, mm -hmm. could become a proxy minion. Uh, and the example that I'm going to demonstrate here today uses this very tiny IoT device. This is an ESP32, which is a, a dual core custom processor, and uh, it runs actually runs a micro Python core. Uh, but what we're going to do with it today is uh, I've written a proxy module that lets this little device scan for new Wi-Fi networks that appear. Oh, wow. And so what happens is we'll, we'll start up the proxy minion and we'll see how we can communicate with the device. And then there is a beacon running on the proxy minion that scans the Wi-Fi uh, spectrum every 15 seconds or so. And every time it turns up a new Wi-Fi network, it will emit an event onto the bus. So you can imagine how powerful that could be um, if you deploy something like this throughout maybe you know your corporate uh, your corporate building, you could uh, watch for rogue Wi-Fi networks, and when you find them, you can track the MAC address back to whatever port in your uh, in your network is that device is attached to, and you can put uh, an ACL rule in place to block that Wi-Fi uh, that Wi-Fi access point from from communicating. That's all something that Salt, you know, is completely capable of doing. Oh yeah. Okay, shall we go? Yeah. All right. right let's, let's take a look. So first, let me show you what the proxy module looks like. Every proxy minion has a proxy module that defines how it needs to communicate with a remote device. Um, and let me get the right file here. So it's very simple. Uh, the proxy module requires just a few functions. We've got a virtual function, just like most uh, execution modules. Mm -hmm. We have an init that gets called when the proxy minion comes up to do whatever initialization needs to do to communicate with the device. 
we have this function called initialized that gets called uh, when the minion itself, the minion code is all set up and ready to communicate with the proxy, with the proxy device. Then we have a ping, just like every other proxy module. So when you say test.ping, this is the function that gets called. And okay. in this case, we'll see in a minute, there's actually an extra LED that's hard to see here. But every time the device gets a ping, that little LED will flash so you know that it received that, that command. These little MicroPython uh, chips actually have a tiny file system on them, so we can list files, uh, we can reset it, we can upload a file to it, uh, we can delete files, we can run files directly from the flash, and then we can do this thing called a ZEC on board, which uh, you just send a script and it runs it. And then finally we have a shutdown. So not a lot of code. Uh, it looks like probably 160 lines uh, of code so that we can talk to this device. So we'll go ahead and flip over to a terminal and uh, we'll start the proxy minion. I have a helper script here to help me out. And I'm running in debug mode so you can see all these messages just to make sure everything's working okay. But uh, you'll see that little LED flash as the first ping is sent to it to make sure the device is there and uh, working. And then we'll go ahead and send a test.ping. We should get a little blink. There it is. And then we get a true back, just like we do with mm -hmm. the test thing. So the interesting thing that we're doing with this device is just kind of demonstrating that you can connect just about anything to your soft infrastructure with a proxy minion. Mm -hmm. And after you do that, you pretty much have the all the power of salt available to you, um, even down to the to the event reactor. So in this instance, I created a script here that uh, runs a beacon that causes this device to scan the Wi-Fi spectrum. Okay. And if it turns up any new Wi-Fi networks, it emits an event onto the SALT event bus to show uh, that has has those new Wi-Fi networks on it. Uh, so it's it's kind of a poor man's um, you know Wi-Fi rogue network scanner. Okay. Uh, so when that when that's all up and running. Uh, you could even extend that into your network. Let's say you've got a managed network uh, at your corporation. Um, you don't want rogue access points to be set up uh, by anybody. Uh, you could right. kind of sprinkle these devices throughout, you know, throughout your building. And if they turn up a new access point that they don't recognize, they drop an event on the bus. The salt master picks that up and says, "Oh, here's an access point that shouldn't be working. I need to block network access to it." So it would have the MAC address of the device everything else that would need to put an access control rule uh, into your routers and switches to prevent that device from being from communicating. Well, and that, that would be an extremely useful thing. Yes, so the beacon itself is really short. It's, uh, it also is only about 50 lines long, and really most of that is just marshalling the data into the right format that we want. Um, and then if it sees something different, it goes ahead and, uh, and drops that event on the bus. So let's see this beacon in action. You don't happen to have a terminal open that's uh, watching the event bus, do you, I CR? I do. So there it is. In fact, we're already seeing this happen. We've, oh, already got, we've already got events on the bus that show that this particular uh, lift local 2.4 um, is, uh, is a new access point that's appeared and of course, you know how Wi-Fi works. Um, you know they go. Wi-Fi can go in and out of range depending on who's walking around or or what's happening. Yep. Um, but I just want to. I'll demonstrate this directly by turning on the personal hotspot on my iPhone. I'll turn that on, and in just a second, you should see my own iPhone appear in the event bus. Yep. We've got to wait for uh, for your Wi-Fi to come up, of course, and. Like you were saying before, the scan is oh, there it there is, it is right already. There. That was that was quick. And so now I know that uh, that your phone is broadcasting Wi-Fi, and I can do something nuclear. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we were talking about. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. All right. No, that is incredibly slick, and the fact that we can uh, take something from such a device and pump that back into the event reactor yeah. really allows us to do some pretty phenomenal things. Such a tiny device too. 
Um, they're they're eight bucks on eBay. Oh wow, really? Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Wow, CR, I'm really glad that you were able to come on with us today and that you were able to show us some of the highlights about the Proxy Minion. This is uh, one, of the, one of the most powerful interfaces that we have inside of SALT and CR's work on it is uh, nothing short of brilliant. Well, until next time, thanks for watching SALT Air and hope to see you again. <laughs>